appealing to people who can say, I'm gonna stroll along the street, I'm gonna have dinner here, and you know, maybe I'll pick something up. I don't Hank think Weber, that, Vice Chancellor at Washington University, and Todd Swanstrom, professor at the University of Missouri St. Louis, have recently collaborated on a study exploring changes in the urban core neighborhoods in St. Louis over the last 60 years. This included the city and inner ring suburbs on both sides of the river. And the neighborhoods very roughly follow a set of patterns. You have neighborhoods that were strong in the beginning and stayed strong throughout. Kirkwood, Webster Grove. And there are those neighborhoods that became weak after World War II when St. Louis lost industry, particularly on the north side of the city. But they paid specific attention to those neighborhoods that saw periods of distress and have come back strong in recent years. All of these older parts of the region are um, feeling a cold breeze, we might say today, right? There's a cold breeze sweeping across the older parts of the region. In the last, in the last two or three decades, it's not as rough, and we're seeing more neighborhoods kind of kicking back, re what we call rebound neighborhoods. So I think that there's a real story there. What, you know, what are these rebound neighborhoods, and what explains uh, why some rebound and others don't, and what does it mean for the region? They focused on the Central West End, Botanical Heights, Mark Twain, and Maplewood neighborhoods. And they say while no neighborhood has the same formula for success, some drivers for revitalization are good schools, walkability, dense populations, close proximity to employment, and diversity. In the past, diversity, you know, neighborhoods that were integrated were viewed as a disadvantage, and there was a notion that there was sort of a tipping point. Right? If you get a certain percentage minority, eventually the neighborhood will tip and become all minority. That does not appear to be the case in the neighborhoods that we've studied. It seems like there's diversity is far from being a negative, is a positive. I'm not saying that we're over racial issues, right? But that I think it's, it's much more um, nuanced and complicated than it was, was before. And that's what people want to move into these neighborhoods as well, because they want that, that neighborhood feel of, the, that's the place I go to eat on Tuesday, or that's right. where I grab my beer on Wednesday. Right, or, and, and that's where I see my neighbors, too. Right. Um, Weber and Swanstrom also talk about third spaces, places people can gather, relax, work, and socialize. Take the Schlafly Bottle Works, for example, in Maplewood. This restaurant and brewery isn't just a gathering place for the people that live in the neighborhood. It also draws people from across the region into Maplewood. Bottle Works, we, we sell beer and we sell food, but we're also kind of a community center. Um, we're, we're a drawing place for a lot of different activities and it brings people from all over. And it really has anchored the community. So when we throw big events and parties, it brings people from all over the city and then they go walk around the neighborhood. So they'll come to one of our beer festivals and they'll walk up the street and they'll go get local chocolate and local pie and local donuts and, and they'll drop into the local boutique shops. So anytime we're doing something here, uh, it benefits the whole community and then it works the other way around as well. So it's, it's been a really nice symbiotic relationship. And that makes Maplewood stand out. Rob Bierenbaum owns 13 buildings in Maplewood in 1999, he was part of a group that worked to pass an ordinance that requires all businesses on the 7200 and 7300 blocks of Manchester be retail only. The theory being retail breeds retail. To me, the ordinance was a really important thing because we weren't ready for retail stores to come flocking to Maplewood at the time, and then they didn't just because the ordinance was there. But what the ordinance did was it kept out non-retail businesses so the spaces that, that are intended for retail could be there when, when we developed to the point that, that we were ready for the, for the businesses to come. The retail core on Manchester, this mix of unique businesses, have been a huge catalyst for Maplewood's revitalization. And it's something that's been made easier by the city government. The city, which streamlined the, the uh, business license application uh, process, uh, a business can come to Maplewood and instantaneously get their license. Uh, and in the cases where you need a conditional use permit, like a restaurant, 
uh, they've got it down to six weeks, whereas in other communities it could be three or four months. Our cinnamon chip, white, honey wheat, or cinnamon swirl. Steve Jaywar recently moved his bakery, Great Harvest, to Maplewood from Olivet. Do you want a bag for this at all? Yeah. And as you know, in this current you know, environment, it's very difficult to run a business, and we struggled over there. And they even helped us with some signage reimbursement and forgivable loans. And if not for all that, um, it, it would have been probably difficult to, to move our business. What's interesting is that you have all these small businesses, and they depend on each other. They While every neighborhood story is different, the most important takeaway is the potential. Rebound neighborhoods are possible. And that the St. Louis region has a sizable number of neighborhoods that in the past 25 years, perhaps surprising number, that have under clear objective criteria have significantly improved while becoming more diverse. For Stay Tuned, I'm Anne-Marie Berger.